Today I'm going to show you how to set up your GoPro and take memorable photos underwater when you free dive. You're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first one to tell you that. I'm not an expert in underwater photography, but I have some tips that you're going to want to know uh, that will help you create memorable images. And they're not just necessarily tips related to the GoPro or underwater photography. So if you just shoot above water, take a minute, watch this video, try to apply these wherever you take photos. All right, so I'm sitting in my office chair. I have a crate of um, things that I wear when I go in the water. The swim cap, mask and snorkel, um, fins. Here's my full wetsuit and swim socks. So we're gonna talk about some of those. Recently I was invited to go out into the water, into the Pacific Ocean, and I joined some friends up at Malibu. When I went out there, I actually borrowed the swim socks, the swim cap, um, and two other very important items. And so we're gonna talk about these. One is a float case. And so you're gonna want a float case to have your GoPro wedged inside. And of course you actually need the frame around it, the GoPro case, so it'll wedge in there tight, but it gives you access to your record button, access to your on off switch and mode button. Um, but you also need an arm strap and that arm strap attaches to the float case. You put it around your arm, then you're swimming and you don't have to hold the camera. It just trails along in the water behind you. And if you let go, this keeps it floating. So both of these together are essential. My plan with the GoPro was to take images. And so I did this intentionally. I did this strategically. And I know from uh, experience video editing that every minute of video you take could lead to an hour in the editing room. And my, my goal wasn't really just to document the experience um, of going out. I wasn't trying to capture video footage just to show that I was out there. I was really trying to take great memorable images. And so one of the first tips that I'll tell you is put this on photo mode and change the setting so that you're shooting in raw. So if you're shooting in raw in the GoPro, you'll have more flexibility when you put it into Lightroom or your editing software. So you wanna make sure you're shooting in raw. Now, some of the things to realize is when you're shooting in RAW on the GoPro, you don't have access to the linear field of view, which is one of the things people often say to make this more cinematic, shoot in the linear view. When you choose RAW, it goes away. Or if you're in linear, you can't select RAW. So you have to make sure you choose wide field of view, and then you'll have access to the RAW setting. So there's something else that is important to realize is when you're taking images, you're really talking about not just camera settings and composition, but you're also talking about timing because you're under the water and you can only hold your breath so long, or at least I can. Um, and so you're really talking about the timing of lining up a shot, triggering the, the shutter. Um, and I feel like the GoPro 7 is a little laggy. Like I never know when I press it, exactly when it's firing because the screen goes black. So I don't know if it goes black at the beginning of the shot or at the end of the shot, but it stays black longer than the shutter is open. So it's a little bit challenging to get that timing right, but you just wanna know going into it, um, when I was setting out to do this, my goal was images that I could share on Instagram. And so I wanted to make sure that I was taking an approach where I could set up the shot with the right timing. Now, I had done a, a trip a couple years ago to Maui and I filmed with a, a TomTom Bandit camera. I'll see if I can find some footage of that. And I know from that where I just shot video, how much video content there is when you're underwater. It's literally just buckets and buckets of footage. And so I knew I didn't want to recreate that experience. I wanted just to work on my, my photography skills. All right, so on the GoPro Hero 7, you have three modes. You have video, you have photo, and you have time lapse. Now, um, there is in the photo mode, there's a burst mode, which is interesting because you hit the, the trigger, the record button, the shutter button, and then it'll take like up to 30 uh, frames right in a row. And that's co cool for action sequences where you don't know if you're gonna get the right uh, moment. And I was saying before how important timing was. The thing to realize is if you choose that mode, which seems like cool, you're diving down and you're trying to get a cool shot and you can trigger it and it'll take 30 images in a row and one is gonna be better than the other. However, it only shoots JPEGs in that, uh, in that mode. So I would not recommend the burst mode, even though it is cool, but you won't, you just, if you choose that, you won't have the benefit of the raw file, which is more flexible. Now the first, the first time out, I accidentally shot in JPEG. I thought I set it to raw, but for some reason I didn't, save or I, I clicked out of it some way. 
And I, I found that when I got back to the computer, I shot JPEG. Now the downside was, of course, and I'm telling you this from experience, I wasn't able to edit the photos like I had hoped. I'd really hoped to have that flexibility of the raw file. And so I made that mistake the first time. So learn from my mistake and set it for the wide angle and raw format. Now, when you're in the water, you might actually bump something and shift out of the, the photo format or change your camera settings. You'll know that you're in those settings because at the bottom of the screen, when you're in camera mode, it'll say wide and raw. So look for that while you're out in the water and make sure that they don't change um, because you can, you can take a minute and reset it if you discover you've bumped a button and changed that setting accidentally. The arm strap and the floaty case could have easily been the most important items um, because it's very hard to swim with the camera in your hand. And that's really what you'll have to do if you don't have these two items. Those, so these were lifesavers. A shout out to Scott, Scott Winslow on Instagram. He's amazing. He's a very guy, kind and generous guy. And he loaned me his uh, floaty case and his, his armband. I'll put links to the things that I picked up to make uh, free diving more uh, enjoyable and possible down below the video if you wanna check those out. It definitely helps to have friends out there who can support you and give you advice. My actual plan, and I'm kind of embarrassed to admit this now, but my actual plan was to take the camera and to shove it up the sleeve of my wetsuit and have the pressure of the wetsuit hold it on. Uh, and that's not a great plan, um, especially if you're trying to get to your camera and it's shoved up your sleeve. But I did have this handy little piece of EDC gear, one of my favorite knives, and I had this uh, shoved up the sleeve just in case I got I don't know, tangled in some fishing line or some kelp attack me. Um, but this is nice because it has the nice, uh, the loop right there. I'll put a link to this knife. Um, it's a cool diving knife. I don't know, it hasn't corroded at all. Oops, now I can't get it open. Yeah, <laughs> hasn't corroded at all. It has some nice saw teeth on there in case you get, you know, tangled up in a pirate's uh, rope or something like that in Davy Jones' locker. All right, now we're gonna get to the pro tips. Here are some, I think it's nine or 10 tips that I can share with you that might make your free diving experience better. Now one has to do, or actually two have to do with the mask. Uh, mask and snorkel, snorkel's attached here to the mask. But really, uh, tip number one is when you go in the water, put your face into the ocean water, get that cold water on your face because you wanna cool or lower the temperature of your skin on your face so that when you put on the mask, it's a cooler temperature inside. And here's why. Inevitably, there's gonna be moisture inside the mask. The hotter your skin is, the more quickly it'll turn that into vapor and it'll fog up your mask. So if you cool your face, then that will help your, your skin temperature stay lower. It'll match more what the water is. And so you'll be less likely to turn into vapor and fog up your mask. That's a pro tip from Julie, uh, who I've been lucky enough to swim with a few times out there. Now, another tip is when you're going out into the water is to um, get some saliva, spit into the, the glass and the mask, rub it around, rinse it in the ocean. And what that does is put a thin uh, film of saliva on the mask it prevents condensation and water droplets from collecting on the mask. So that also helps you with visibility. So those are two tips, two pro tips with your, your mask. Pro tip number three is to lick the lens of the GoPro. Ah, like that. What that does is again, coat the lens with saliva and when it gets washed off in the ocean, a thin layer of saliva remains and it helps the water droplets bead and run off, helping you keep your lens free. Um, so if you come up out of the water and you're taking a shot, it'll help those water droplets not block your picture. Pro tip number four is to remember to shoot vertically as well as horizontally. Part of the drama, and most of the drama, is that play of light and dark underwater. So you have the light, the sun coming from above, and it just drains away as the water gets deeper and deeper. It's much easier to capture that vertically over horizontally. So remember to turn the camera. Um, I, I, put the record button up on the right, and then um, it's hard to get a good grip. Um, it's much easier to press down like this, but you might try this uh, index finger curving around to trigger. Um, remember that you have the padding, so it's a little bit trickier there. Um, but just remember with that camera like that, you wanna press in there to shoot vertically. Now, remember to choose a subject. Now this seems kind of obvious, but when you're underwater, it's a vast world. You have a wide angle. There's gonna be a lot to look at, tons to look at if you're near a reef or there's a lot of fish or kelp. And so remember to pick a subject. If there are four fish, 
pick one fish. You have to know in your photographer's mind which is the fish you want the, the viewer to look at and focus on that. Now the other fish will be there, the other kelp will be there, but you should know what is the focal point. And you try to get closer to that or use the lighting, the contrast to accentuate that subject. That's gonna make your underwater photos pop. Remember, don't always shoot down. It's very easy to float at the top. You're wearing your snorkel and you just hover and it's, it's a cool view and there's a lot uh, you can see, but don't just shoot down. And the reason is when you shoot down, it's hard to capture that sense of depth or contrast or separation of the subject from the background. The light is coming down evenly onto the surface below you and it's hard for objects to stand out. So what I recommend is dive down or hold the camera down and try to shoot even with the subject or even better dive down and shoot upward towards the light. And we're gonna talk about that in another tip. So next tip is to backlight your subject. And the reason is this, is you're trying to create separation, contrast of the subject in the background. So if I have the sun coming this way, shore is that way, and I have a fish over there, and I'm taking the picture that way, the sun is hitting the fish, it's giving the fish and the background even lighting, and it's treating it the same as the background. I can easily swim around the other side, plan the shot, and take a picture from uh, this side of the fish, so you have the fish and then the sun, and what that does is creates a backlight and maybe even gives the fish a little outline, a little rim light, helps it pop out off the background. And you're using that light and that, um, that sun that's coming in to help you construct a, a very effective strategic uh, composition. So remember to use backlight, use the sun to your advantage, shoot into it. Now, a lot of times we try to avoid that, but in reality, if you look at most uh, movies, they have a clever use of backlight to help the subject stand out by providing that rim light. Uh, it's hard to find uh, movies where they're shooting um, the same direction as the main source of light. Next pro tip, get yourself in a position where your subject will swim into your composition. So instead of jerking the camera around and trying to follow a subject with your hand and wrist and then triggering it, position yourself where you know the subject's gonna pass and uh, kick, float, whatever, but go slowly, subtly, smoothly forward, and as the subject comes into view, then trigger the shot. That's a way to get a, a more stable shot, use the water to kind of buoy you and stabilize you, which it's naturally gonna do, instead of trying to rip uh, or turn uh, kind of violently or aggressively or quickly to, towards something. So plan out those shots and use your movement so that the subject comes into view into your frame. The next tip is kind of related to the last one is use the ocean's current to help you get into position. So I noticed when I was uh, out there filming and shooting that the tide was kind of coming in over these rocks, these reefs, and then going back and the fish would literally just be swept one way and swept the other way. And they could have swum away, but they were getting played with or toyed with or moved by the ocean's current. So I knew I wanted a picture of the fish so I put myself in position so that the ocean's current would push them back towards me. So I used the movement of the water to help me be in the right position. Instead of fighting it, instead of trying to swim toward a fish who can swim 30 times faster than me, I helped uh, set myself up for success by using the movement of the ocean's current to push the subject and me closer together. Don't go alone, be out there with people, be uh, safe, number one, but also have a sense of support. I was lucky enough to have cool people to lend me gear uh, before I could buy my own, before I even really knew I needed those uh, items have people to um, draw your attention to cool things to shoot. Hey, look over here, there's a, a starfish. That was a cool moment my first time out. People were pointing things out to me. And so that sense of community and camaraderie and safety is something you want when you go uh, free diving. I hope you got something out of this video. Actually, if I could take a second, the reason I make these videos is to share information. Uh, I'm a teacher, that's what I, I do, that's my career, but I love sharing information. I'm passionate about photography, and I hope this video has been helpful. Um, if you like it, there's gonna be more content like it. Hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.